Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. We'll start in a second. Okay. okay, so welcome to the third workshop of Arctex Celebration as Ritual. If you're joining me today, please say hi in the chat. Uh, before we get started, I would like to say this workshop series was made possible in part thanks to Queen's Council, Queen's Council on the Arts and their funding for the New Works Grant. And so let's begin. And if you like the glasses I'm wearing today, they're from Candy Wu. She makes great art glasses. And I got these as a birthday present to myself. And speaking of birthdays today, we're gonna to be talking about celebrating the self and making that a ritual for yourself. Through the poetic practice of ekphrasis. So let me share my screen. So celebration as ritual. What is celebration? So here's a small fact about me. I've actually never had a birthday party and it's just basically been the norm for me. Like I never seen birthday parties as something I really wanted, but Growing up, I never really had a clear way of celebrating myself. So for the past few years, it's been a lot of figuring that out for myself. And so 10 years ago, I came up with an idea that each year I would do something I've never done before. And that was a way of me being present with myself, but also thinking of all the things I could possibly do and possibly be. And so for me, celebration is about being the full self, being the whole self. And this poem here is from my current Instagram series called Inspiration, Inspiration and Information. And it's basically me taking different tarot decks and from the cards that I pull from the tarot decks, I write a poem inspired by them. So this poem was me thinking about the idea of celebrity and redefining it as a celebration of the self. Be your own celebrity. So let me read it. Respect yourself, redefine celebrity. Too often we look outside ourselves, seeking a power we think we do not have. We covet the larger than life stature and not see it as a mask. Pull back the curtain and see the everyday person who built the structures that the famous lay upon. Dig deep and see yourself, hear yourself. What is the power that your body holds and find home in it? because you are a mass of people in celebration of life. So if we look at the etymology of celebration, it's, it's to perform publicly with appropriate rites. So originally the idea of celebrate was that it was a form of ritual and it was the idea of bringing together a mass of people in honor of something. But it wasn't necessarily in honor of a specific person. It could be in honor of a specific principle, an idea, whatever. You know, singing praises of something. And so I wanted to define 
celebrity and celebration as a kind of network of multiplicity of celebrating all the selves or a summoning or sweeping together of all that something is or someone is, or, or in, in another sense, a naming of a collection. So today we're gonna to be looking at a couple of pieces from Asayo Wadud, who um, a while ago did a residency with Dance Space Project. And with Dance Space Project, she uh, created a series of poems inspired by uh, the dancers who were working in that space. So let me switch over to that screen. Good. So the first poem we're gonna read is Coral Or. Coral or, coral or multiple, or continental, or Fibonacci, or rest here, or notice the marriage of plen plenitude and then coral, or fabric and selvage, slither, slather, and honeycomb, or convent and bridge, or weft and stray language for sentence, their long years assume their business. Coral or took to the bed or gathered up the blankets tucked, anything inside primed it for music. Took to the bed or my hands cup to cup contain the clean water, or just rest here, coral, or frail latisse and frayed ligature, or gathered ith isthmus, my faulty dependence or grip, so now the hands are covenant, coral or muted, muted or slippage, three points or threadbare, threadbare and chanting in agreement. Coral or we have said what we have, we have said what we said at dawn, then later the same thing said to etch the coral, the marvel, the gangway, the storm, the shed inside the manual work or multiple continental Fibonacci or rest here or notice the marriage of plenitude and then. Okay. So this poem called Coral or, I love the play on the word or, or representing the multiple possibilities of what something can be but or also sounds like other words. When we think of the origin of something, the ordering of something. If you study Yoruba uh, relig religion, you have Ori, which is the ruling uh, energy over your head. So the multiple ors that can come out of a collection which is the chorus or the choral. And so Asaya is playing with that multitude throughout the poem. You have multiple uh, perspectives on a same idea, right? The continental, the Fibonacci, the rest here, the marriage of the plenitude. Even her use of the honeycomb as an image, it's a structure that's filled with many capacities. The convent, something that holds many things.
Same with the idea of the bed, the contain, the hands cupping to contain, the lattice, the frayed ligature, the gathered isthmus, the hands are a covenant. So you see throughout the poem, she's um, saying various images that imply this kind of structure that holds something. And you can see also in the photographs, again, it's the structure that's holding. Even the idea of the storm, right? This stirring into being that is made of a, a multiplicity of things swirling around together. So let's go to the next poem, which continues the idea of the chorus or the circulation, circularity. So this is circulation continuum room, going back to the idea of a space that contains something. Let their eyes adjust to us, okui, Okpok Wasili, Circulation Continuum Room, Part One. Circulation. The codifying we slips into the room, stands still at the threshold, waits to see who can bear it. All the codifying weight, brick, sculpture, and mortar. Pause. There is no hurry. It takes so long for obsidian and oxidation, and before that, there's a forewarning. So we will fill the entire dominion, every zone, every re red line, every tone, every one. Threshold lent to waiting, then to see what movement. Pause. It quieted the town to see our hands at work. If you have something to offer, you can say it with a gesture. Any small accretion and tend it and cultivate the garden, build an enamel shell for it, watch it settle into its own firm swaddle and sit with it when it insists on flight. Pause. There is no hurry in a chorus. If you have something in your hand, palm up, look to all its fault lines, see what magic, what monuments or hands, pass it with permission or keep it enclosed, a steadfast single key cut. If you have anything to offer, push it across the altar, no matter the Etruscan nature, no matter its future textures, don't yet know what anything holds. Annex the soft focus to guide everything, everything's Etruscan nature. Crystals claim the better work, the clear waters on the lake's edge. The lake's hum be becomes any noise. The lake's hum becomes any noise or a choral anthem. 700 voices, low hum of forgiveness. Labor comes in long vowels, prior work in the back room. Forgiveness like, I've heard the pendulous music, have the payload once I heard the music, have the payload once I knew what futures. I settled into my half life or the handed continuum. Continuum. I've seen you with the workhorse. I will note the way you ride it. Take all forgiveness, then 700 voices and an engine's throttle. Forgiveness, like my palm or a flat line. My palms is in plenitude, my palm still in privatization. I keep it open to fill with the family's long lineage of red clay. 
open to fill with bits and bricks, joint work may suffuse with time codified in this brick and brack and make the of the revenant silk. I had something to offer and I wedged it in the corner, let it slither slather by the corner's edge, let it slither slather like it needs us, wait for it to beg enclosure, see how it needs it. It says it all in the penumbra. Snake oil and quick hands or tuck it in the rounded corner, drag your fingers across the surface, what harrowing expectation, let the bell and chimes of it reach you. The pinprick could ring out. If you have something to offer, leave it on the altar. If you have something to offer, I mean, I remember what you had to offer with was in the same song music. May as well be fugitive, may as well be milky, something that could feed us cupped in my hands. I let you lap from my hands and then consume what I can. The nervous tension of my sutured finger may as well be black noise, noiseless as the obsidian gangplank. And if you name it black noise, what it needs is the Latisse hum to fill it. Pause. A little bird song, the sliver. Give the bird a name so it can, so that it knows you need it. Wait for it to cast its exacting spell. Room. The spell is cast, so your left foot gestures, your right foot absorbs the heat. The church bells let out their solvent song, and that's their language. All logic extruded. I won't reckon with the force of it. All logic extruded. Dawn comes and dawn goes. A solvent chorus and then a spackled corner. Pause. A hand breaks the fall, my scalpula. I still need it. If you have anything to offer, may as well be fugitive. All quartered gestures, coterie or little hem circle, part the thread to grant the tenants shelter. Doesn't take my slight line to make out what my eyes offer. A sanctuary does the stilted work. In all the minor keys it sounds that because it knows how dark a sanctuary can become. A foot scuffles the lacquered floor, then my open hand locates the stillness. I expect to find a sacrament. The sanctuary builds in a movement. The Latisse hum spills from the corners. I insist on more white noise. I offer it as a way to settle the space. The space needs no introduction or silent attrition. 10 columns supports the structure. Another way to say 10 columns do all the work. Trinity in threefold, then one. Pause. I welcome the pink noise, the conveyance of the white noise, the covenant of more noise. I know there's more noise. 700 voices, obsidian hum of forgiveness, the choral work of let their eyes adjust to us. Pause. The spell is cast, so your left foot gestures, your right foot absorbs the heat. The church bells let out their solvent song, and that's their language. Hey. So, if you don't know who Okui Okwasili is, um, she was one of the dancers at Dance Space uh, who worked in collaboration with uh, Sia. And again, uh, this poem continues the theme of the idea of the course and the idea of this, this kind of architecture or space, sacred space that allows for a flow of exchange. And again, Asaya uh, uses words that hint back at to this, this kind of structure that allows a flow of information or music or noise, right? So words like codifying, like the word code, 
uh, is relates back to the word codex, which is a book made out of a tree trunk and it stores information. The, the room as a structure that holds various people, you know, the masonry the, of brick sculpture and mortar. And the idea that within this structure that there is movement, but it's not necessarily going anywhere. So there's no hurry. And once again, the hands at work, the multiple hands that build this structure. And the idea that within this structure, you're constantly having a, an exchange between various people. So offering something as well as receiving. And through that, that receiving and giving, there creates this culture, a uh, cultivating of the garden. And through this, this exchange between various people within a space, you create magic, you create a monument, you, you create something bigger than yourself alone. Yeah, and she continues this idea throughout the poem. And also back to um, what I mentioned before about the Ori, right? The, the head, the ruling head, spiritual head, she mentions a workhorse. And if you um, know about uh, Haitian voodoo, there's the idea of being ridden like you're the horse of the gods. So the idea of the workhorse and being ridden by this larger sense of yourself. And in a way the chorus becomes the God, right? Everyone together becomes this larger sense of something. And another thing, uh, she mentions the slither and slather, and that could be related to dance movements, but it also could be related to a lot of various religions using the idea of serpentine movements or the, the snake god. So you see that even in this poem, she's making subtle references, it seems like to other spiritual uh, systems. She could, she could have done that consciously, could have been subconscious. Um, these are ideas that have been going around humanity for a long time. They're ancient. The mentioning of snake oil, basically an anointing. So you see all the religious references throughout the poem. And, and those references give a kind of sacredness to the space and a, a kind of presence of being that's both here, but also in the past as well. See the rhythm Dawn comes and dawn goes. There's that kind of rhythm throughout the poem of this coming and going, this exchange and movement. Uh, 
And again, the movement, the left foot gestures, the right foot absorbs. So the taking in, the receiving, and then the giving, right? The, the making a gesture, the communing with others. And all of that is communication and language and song. Okay, so if anybody has any comments on those two poems, feel free to share them in the chat. I'm going to return to the PowerPoint. So since Asaya worked with uh, dancers, I would like to call her series of poems a form of ekphrasis. Ekphrasis is a description exercise for a work of art, typically visual art, and I consider dance a form of visual art. So the etymology is a combination of the prefix ex, which is out, with the verb phrasen, to point out or explain, in other words, it means the idea of to express yourself or an expression. So a while ago, I watched um, the Free Conjure Black, a digital li liberation salon from Weeksville Heritage Center. And one of the featured artists was Angela Davis Johnson. And she mentioned um, a book she was reading about African spirituality. And one of the quotes from the book was the symbol as a doorway to ritual. And so I was thinking of the idea of ekphrasis as looking at symbols, looking at a visual art piece and that's a doorway to a kind of meditative practice or ritual. And in other words, as Angela calls it, accessing an archive or talking, what she calls it as talking across time. And so I wanted to show a few pieces that Angela shared during the salon, because I feel like collage itself is a kind of mandala piece uh, that can be meditative. And I want to use this as a time to do a kind of call and response where I share the pieces of her work with you and then you have time to respond with your own words through list poems. So I will share each piece and then I will give you a minute or so to write down as many words that are conjured up in response to you seeing this piece, these pieces. So let's begin. So this is the first piece. So I'll give you a minute to look at it and write down a few words in response. I am a non-attorney spokesperson representing a team of lawyers who help people that have been injured or wrong. If you've had hernia surgery from 2008 on, you want to pay close attention to this message. The last words you want to hear after surgery is a recall on the material they put in your body. But that's exactly what's happened. At least one manufacturer pulled the brand of mesh off the market after high failure rates. If you've had hernia surgery after 2008 and you're having Okay, next piece.
Okay. Next one. Okay, next piece. Okay, next piece. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed those pieces from Angela Davis Johnson. What I'd like to for you to do with the words you've collected in response to those pieces is to create your own choreography of celebration. Uh, you may not know this, but the word choreography itself means writing the chorus. So I want you to take the list of the list poem you created of these words inspired by either Asiya's work or the collages and to create your own collage chorus of words and or visuals in celebration of all that you are. You can add additional words, you can add pictures, whatever you like but it's your own choreography. And if you do create something, please do share with me. I would love to share it as well. Yeah, so if you would like to get in touch with me for J Expressions, my mobile library project, or stay in touch about the upcoming launch of Jam Journal, which will be in November. You can sign up to the J Expressions newsletter, tinyletter.com slash J Expressions. You can also follow me at on Twitter at J Express Books and IG at J Expressions Bookshop. I'm also accepting donations for the mobile library as well as for the production of the Jam Journal. 
I would like to thank you all for coming to the workshop. And I hope that this inspired you in some way. Stay tuned for the next month's workshop, which will be work, which will be looking at the work of poet Lorenzo Thomas, who actually lived in Southeast Queens. Bye.